this lesson, we will apply the Baywood Severed Law to calculate the magnetic field generated by an infinitely long wire. Now let's consider a thin conducting wire carrying a steady current I placed along the Y axis as shown in the diagram below. We are required to derive an expression for the magnitude of B at a point P, a distance R from the wire. Now recall, Baywood Severed Law basically states that db is equal to mu naught i divided by 4 pi multiplied by dl cross r cap all divided by r squared. Now in order for us to evaluate this integral, we need to know our current element. We need to know our unit vector. If you look at this diagram, you will identify the following. This is the direction of our unit vector. This is the direction of our current element. And if you notice, dl is equal to dy g. We can express our unit vector in terms of i and g. Now the component, the component of i in this direction, this will be sine theta, and the component in this, in the vertical direction, this will be cosine theta. So R cap is equal to sine theta I plus cosine theta J. This means that the L cross R cap will be equal to we can express this as a 3 by 3 determinant. This is 0 dy, 0, sine theta, cosine theta, 0. And that will be equal to 0 plus 0 plus k, bracket, 0 minus sine theta dy which means that the L cross R cap will be equal to negative K cap sine theta dy. Let's call this one. Another way that you could have actually do this is to remember that A cross B is equal to A B sine theta n cap where n is a unique vector perpendicular to both a and b using the right hand rule if you place your right hand with your hand extended in the direction of the l and curve your fingers towards the r your thumb will point into the page which means that the unit vector n is equal to negative negative k therefore the l cross the r back is equal to negative k sine theta dy just like before now the next step would be for us to rewrite bayward severed law so bayward severed law can be re-expressed as db equal to mu naught i all divided by 4 pi multiplied by dl cross r cap divided by r squared this will be equal to negative mu naught i over 4 pi multiplied by sine theta dy over r squared K. Therefore, B, which is the integral of dB, will be equal to negative mu naught I divided by 4 pi, the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity because we are dealing with an infinite wire sine theta dy 
all divided by r squared. So this means that b will be equal to mu naught i over 4 pi bracket 2 times the integral from 0 to positive infinity of sine theta dy all divided by r squared which is equal to mu naught i divided by 2 pi the integral from 0 to positive infinity of sine theta dy all divided by r squared. Now, um, the sine of theta is equal to big R all divided by R. This means that R is equal to big R all divided by sine of theta, which is just going to be R cosec theta. Similarly, tangent of theta is equal to R over Y which means that y is equal to r divided by tan theta, which is just going to be r cotangent theta. Hence, dy is equal to negative r cosec square d theta. So we can replace dy with this. If we do that, we will have b equal to mu naught i over 2 pi. Now, the integral, re recall, now I'm going to leave my limits up and we're going to come back to that. Sine theta bracket negative r cosec squared theta d theta divided by bracket r cosec theta all squared. If you simplify this expression, you will have negative mu naught i divided by 2 pi. The integral from pi over 2 to 0, I'm going to explain in a little bit why it's the case. The cosecs take care of each other. We will have here sine theta d theta all divided by r. Now, before we take this r outside of the bracket, remember or recall that as when y is 0, a quart of 0 is pi over 2. When y is infinity the arc cotangent of infinity is actually zero so this means that we can rewrite this as negative mu naught i divided by 2 pi r the integral from pi over 2 to 0 sine theta d theta this is just going to be equal to mu naught i negative over 2 pi r bracket negative cosine theta from pi over 2 to 0. Hence, b will be equal to mu naught i over 2 pi r bracket cosine of 0 minus cosine of pi over 2. This is 0. This is 1. Therefore, this will be equal to mu naught i divided by 2 pi r. Hence, b will be equal to mu naught i divided by 2 pi r. R, this is like negative k bar or you could just express it as b 
equal to mu naught i over 2 pi r which is actually into the page. Thank you.